Okay, enough screen time. Oh, Dad, can you listen to the radio instead, please? I suppose so. They play some good tunes on... Not your boring grown-up station. It's not. Come, kids, please. We can get that downstairs on the smart speaker, not in the bedroom. It's okay. We can get it on the app. If you say so. Okay. Thanks, Dad. Now, let me have your tablet. Screen time is over. About that, you just said we can listen on the app. And the app is on our tablet. It was downloaded from the App Store for free yesterday by Mum. But... You did promise. Listen anywhere. Smart kids listen on Smart Speaker. This is Fun Kids. Hello, this is the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast, where you get to find out about the best books from the people who write them. I'm Bex, and this week you're going to hear Ben Bailey-Smith chat about his brand new book, Something I Said. We have got the lovely Claire Waze telling us about her brand new book, and we've got a very special reading from a bit of a celebrity, Claire Balding. So, like I said, we've got Ben Bailey-Smith in the Fun Kids podcast this week. This is a great one. He's also known as comedian Doc Brown, and he's very funny indeed. So here's what happened when I spoke to him. So I'm joined right now down the line by comedian and author Ben Bailey Smith. Hey Ben, how are you going? Hey, I'm really, really good. Um, it, you, as usual, my life is is frantic, and I'm I'm running from one place to another. But um, I'm fully focused on fun kids. So I'm I'm very excited to be here. Oh, you old charmer. That's what I love to hear. Thanks. I just finished your book this morning and it is an amazing, epic adventure. I loved every second of it. It must be just so exciting to see it coming out. You know, it's it's an absolute dream come true. It's so, so hard to write. Um, I've never tried to write a novel before and I, I found it really, like a, the, probably one of the biggest challenges of my life. So it is so satisfying to see it. Uh, and, you know, people telling me that they've read it, people such as yourself, I, I, it makes me feel very proud and, and excited, especially because I haven't actually held one in my hands yet. I have a proof copy sitting next to me right now. Uh, we should tell the listeners it's called Something I Said. Also, uh, in a good way, you've packed a lot in. There's a lot of writing there. And it's all about Carmichael. Can you tell us about the character? Yeah, it's about a 13-year-old kid called Carmichael Taylor. He's um, he's a he's a kid from London. He's what you might call a smart aleck and a bit of a big mouth, which is maybe hinted in the in the title. You know, sometimes we say, "Oh, is it something I said?" <laughs> when someone feels like that, you might have been a bit rude. So we find out quite early on that he's had more than a few issues at school because of things that he's said. He just finds lots of things funny, you know, in life where you see something funny happen you don't mention it to anybody because you think it might be rude to say it he always says it he's he's one of those and eventually it uh, winds him up in serious trouble with his school but at the same time it puts him in a position where he's got the opportunity to become famous because of his big mouth so it's a it's a strange double-edged sword and a challenge for this kid to decide what to do does he use this skill this big mouth skill to find fame and maybe fortune, but also lose his school place, maybe lose his friends, maybe lose the respect and, and love of his family? Or does he does he try and do the right thing and ignore this incredible opportunity? So it's, it's, it's a story of a life-changing moment, I guess, and a life-changing choice. You know, it's a story about karma and uh, what happens when you do good things, what happens when you do bad things, what the results of your behavior are and and most of all it's uh, like you say it's a, a big old epic comedy adventure with hopefully with laughs on every page it really is it's such a fun book i was hooked in immediately it was just one of those books i'm annoyed at you for this but it meant i just went to bed really late because i couldn't put it down it is such a good book and you also have alex as well who is one of my favorite characters alex is carmichael's best friend and she's just really really fun but she also has her best friend's interest at heart yeah she's my favorite character as well i loved writing for her because of the way her brain works, you know, she she's not quite a space cadet. She's a bit more switched on than that, but she is very much sort of full of her own imagination. She looks at the world in a very particular way. And I think that's that's why her and, and, and Carr get on so well, because they both have very singular uh, outlooks on life and they're perfect uh, sort of 
partners in crime, if you like. Yeah, and they have a very similar sense of humour, which helps, I guess, because Carmichael's special skill is his stand-up comedy abilities. Did you have to use your own experience as a stand-up for his performances? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You know, they always say write about what you know, you know, and I, I was I was nothing like Carr as a kid, but, um, you know, when, when I thought about that age-old rule, write about what you know, I thought, well, I know what it's like to be a 13-year-old boy, because I was one, and I know what it's like to be a stand-up comedian, because I was one. So I kind of put the two things together, uh, particularly for the scenes where he is performing, you know, the, the nerves, what goes through your head or doesn't go through your head if you're having a tough time. All of those things are directly from my own experience as an adult doing it. You know, it's just one of the most scary things you can do. Um, you know, you ask most people and they'll tell you public speaking, speaking in front of people is, is their worst nightmare, you know. So trying to get that across in a book came 100% from my own experience. I didn't have to do any research, you know. I really felt it. When you were describing him being on stage and hearing or not hearing, the crowd cheering and laughing, I felt like I was there. There were a few pages where my heart was like, oh no, what's going to happen? You described it so well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's that. it really was what I was trying to do. The, the, the interesting thing about a book is you have that space, you have that time to really dig deep into feelings and emotions. I always remember my sister saying to me once, because uh, I was saying, oh, you know, the, the movie's never as good as the book, you know, when they make a movie out of a book. Yeah. And she said to me, well, think about it. You know, in a book, a character comes down the stairs for breakfast and you can describe how with each step, that person, what that person's feeling, maybe the third step reminded them of something from their childhood, the fourth step they felt really sad, the fifth step creaked and it, it made them scared. And you could do that over three pages that could take you 20 minutes to read, you know? Mm. Whereas in a movie, he just walks down the stairs. <laughs> Good advice. Uh, now you did say you write from your own experiences. Have you ever kicked a chicken? <laughs> I've definitely not done that, but um, I've pounded a chicken before. I remember one time I was making uh, a, what I think what they call spatchcock chicken, where you sort of spread the meat out and you oh, have yeah. a special hammer. So I was sort of thinking about that in terms of the feeling of of hitting chicken flesh because it's, it's it's actually it's not that different from human flesh. It's it's it's, it's quite weighty. There's a lot of it, and, and kicking a whole one. Is not, uh, is not like kicking a football. <laughs> you know, you would definitely hurt your toe. It is quite chunky. And uh, now before I let you go, Ben, there's one thing I've got to do. Every author who comes to Fun Kids does a little quick fire round of questions, if that's okay with you. Yeah, great. So first off, easy and gently, books or Kindles? Oh, books. Yeah. All day long. I mean, I got a Kindle as soon as they came out because I thought, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, you can take it on holiday and you don't have to carry lots of books. But you know what I... I hate is that when you finish a book on Kindle, there's nothing to show for it. I like to finish the book and put it on my bookshelf and, and I feel like, oh yeah, I've read that one, you know? Feels like an achieve more of achievement. So books every time. Yeah, I get you. For me, it's more the smell of a new book. Heroes or villains? I like villains. Um, I've just played a, a couple of villains in a row in, in two different um, TV projects and it is so much more fun. Because it's like all the all the naughty things you want to do in life that you can't do, you could do if you were a, a, a supervillain. <laughs> and I'm not going to be a supervillain in real life. So to pretend is great. And I, I love reading about villains. And I wouldn't say Carl Michael's a villain, but he's definitely, you know, he's not perfect. And, and I much prefer those kind of characters. Oh, they are much more fun. Do you prefer stand-up comedy or acting? Oh, I mean, they're so different. The the feeling that you get from making people laugh live, out loud, on, on stage is incomparable. Nothing's as good as that. But then at the same time, acting is is more fun, I think, because you do it as part of a team. You're never alone, where it's really scary because you're always on your own. Um, so I think maybe acting just edges it because I, I like like messing around with, with other people. Oh, right. You like having a gang around you. Fair enough. Um... Yeah, exactly. Film adaptation or TV adaptation? I think TV adaptation because, like I was saying, that, that example of walking down the stairs, I think with a TV adaptation, you have more time, more breathing space, so you can do the, the long walk down the stairs and, and, and show you 
how a character really feels o- over time. TV, good. Okay, uh, Hogwarts or Narnia? Oh, that's a tough one. Probably Narnia. Only just, though. All right, only just. Laptop or write by hand? That's a very interesting question. I, I write more by laptop, um, but only because I'm scared of losing things. I think there's more soul in writing by hand. I only just found out that Philip Pullman writes by hand, which hey. just blew my mind. Oh my goodness, can you imagine the notebooks he has? Who, who writes those up, eh? <laughs> Camden or New York? Oh, that's another really tough one. I'd say it's Camden by a nose, only because it's so heavily linked to my childhood, so there's nostalgia there for me. I have to say, I live in London, very near to where you were describing in the book, and it was like, oh my God, I've never seen it written down before. It's funny, Um, because it's such an iconic place when you think of the people that have passed through Camden, but you don't often read about it or see it in programmes or movies or anything. Or seeing just normal people who lived there before. Normally you just see famous people. That was the bit I liked about it. Mm. Do you write nine to five or when you fancy? I only write when I fancy, unless I'm forced to. So with something I said, there was a time limit, you know, so I had to write every day. But I'm at my best when it's, I feel like writing. If I just open up the laptop or have a blank piece of paper and I get up at nine o'clock and I say, right, let's go. Very little happens. (laughs) (laughs) Most of the time it's like, oh my gosh, quickly, 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 find a, find a pen, find a pen, you know, that's the best stuff. All right, you've got to be in the zone, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Oh, that's another really tough one. <laughs> I'm going to say Pooh um, just because, I mean, I love Paddington so dearly, but Pooh can make me cry as well as, as make me laugh, so I think he probably just p- pips... Paddington. That's a very good reason. I'll give you that one. And finally, this is the last one and the most important, cheese and onion or salt and vinegar? For me, it's salt and vinegar all the way, yes! but it does depend on the brand. Yes! Right, what we're talking here. So, you know, if we're talking Walkers, even within Walkers, like, so Walkers normal crisps, uh-huh. salt and vinegar and cheese and onion, I don't really like either of those. The salt and vinegar's too strong and the cheese and onion's too strong. But so, um, Walkers baked... The cheese and onion's delicious. Oh. And the salt and vinegar's average. But in general, over all brands, I prefer salt and vinegar if it's uh, sort of more like, you know, the fancy ones like sea salt and balsamic vinegar. I like it where there's a bit more flavour. Cheese and onion's always a risk in terms of your breath for the rest of the day. That's the problem, It's right? not Walker's baked cheese and onion, then it's salt and vinegar every time. Well, that is the most in-depth answer I have ever had for that question. Pretty serious about snacks, so that shouldn't really be a quick-fire question. You, you'll have to get me back on the show to do a 15-minute chat about snacks. Well, in which case, you'll be fully booked already, because I need you next to answer whether salt and vinegar is a green packet or a blue packet. Well, I mean, now you're opening a can of worms, so that, that might need an hour. That's a good hour, if nothing else. Well, Ben, thank you so much for chatting about the book. It's going to be our Fun Kids Book of the Month for June because I believe it comes out on June the 10th. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, I've picked it as our Book of the Month. So, Ben, thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you. Lovely stuff. Thank you so much to Ben Bailey Smith. Definitely check out that book. Now, just got to let you know, bit of a heads up, uh, Marcus Rashford has a brand new book coming out very soon and we cannot wait to get our hands on it. In fact, a copy, a very special copy of his book, You Are a Champion, was sent to me at the Fun Kids studio. So as soon as I've read it, I will let you know all about it. I can't wait. All right, then now it's time to chat to lovely Claire Waze about her brand new story. So I'm joined right now down the line by the author Claire Waze. Hey Claire, how are you going? Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us because you have released a brand new book unto the world. It is called The Lightning Catcher and uh, it's a pretty exciting time, right? It is. It's really exciting. So The Lightning Catcher is all about Alfie. He moves into a brand new uh, area. Can you tell us a little bit about him? Okay, well, yes, Alfie, it's about Alfie who's moved to a new village called Folding Ford. He's moved there from the city and he finds the weather full of localised glitches and decides to investigate. So there'll be a frozen puddle here and there without any rain on the hottest day in June, or there'll be a patch of ice just on one branch of one tree by itself, or a whirlwind in one of his dad's buckets. Uh, So, yes, he decides to investigate 
and his investigations lead him into the dilapidated grounds of a house owned by Mr. Clem, who's the person in the village who all the kids are scared of, and even the adults are wary of him. Um, but he really does need to investigate this, so he's got a new best friend called Sam, but unfortunately Sam flat out refuses to investigate in that particular place, Mr. Clem's garden, because it's such a no-go area. And so poor old Alfie ends up trespassing in this garden alone and ends up opening a box that he shouldn't just to be sure that he thinks he's heard a, a creature in there that might be trapped. So he opens it a tiny, tiny little bit and he lets something loose, something that's faster than the wind and scares himself to death, runs away and the, the whole adventure explodes when the creature comes looking for Alfie and Mr. Clem comes looking for Alfie too. <laughs> and yeah, so the adventure begins, really. Yeah. That is a brilliant synopsis. Yeah, because it's all about Alfie's, I guess, relationship with Wizzy, who is, is, is what he finds. Yes, that's right. Yes. Now, Al uh, Alfie and Wizzy uh, have an interesting relationship. What was it like writing Wizzy? Because uh, I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, it, it, Wizzy is a character, but also not a traditional one, let's say. Yes, very different. And yes, it's hard to talk about Wizzy without giving things away, but I'll try. So, <laughs> yes, it, it was really it was really great writing Wizzy because Wizzy comes from a place where I, I won't tell you where, but... Wizzy is used to an environment where lots and lots of energy is required. So when she finds herself here in the village of Fold and Ford, where very little energy is needed, she can't adjust. So she's got all this surplus energy, which she discharges in extreme ways. And that has a huge effect on the weather. That sort of powers the weather in this book. And she does fun things like squashing down and travelling like a text and... Uh, all sorts of lights dancing around. So, so yeah, it was really. I thought about the science of how 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 a creature like that would behave in a place like this, and just just used it to make exciting things happen. Really, so it was great fun. Now, I did notice you have a bit of a science background. Speaking of that, did that kind of inspire your your creation of the book? It did, really. Yes, I didn't sort of set out to try and do it like that, but. It always pops up in it, in your explanations of things and your, your curiosity to find out, well, how would this happen and how would that happen? The science just naturally comes in. So, yes, my, my science background, I think it, it does really come into a lot of my writing, but not in a, in a kind of sort of setting out like that kind of way. So, so yeah, it was interesting. You've also got uh, some other really lovely characters in there as well. Like you say, you've got Sam and and you've got Alfie's sister. Uh, is it Lily as well, isn't it? Um, Lily, yeah. Yeah, and Lily has also had a bit of a tough time. Yeah, she has. Lily. Lily's actually the whole reason that they've had to move from the city to the village because she had a really horrible bullying incident at her old school and needed a fresh start and... Uh, needed to be near a school that a different school that caters for that kind of thing and she got so obsessed with it all in the end that she just couldn't eat very much mm. she just started going down that that really downhill path so but yeah Lily's um she's a great uh, character in the book she has you know really important part to play and I, I, I really enjoyed uh, writing her actually because her personality she's so the the sort of fights between Lily and Alfie that are just normal sibling fights, they really take off in quite quite a funny way, but they love each other really underneath. Tell me, what was the best bit uh, in the book, something that our readers and our listeners should look out for when they're checking out? Is there a particular scene that is your favourite? Uh, yeah, I do have a few favourite parts, actually. I, I seem to love all the parts that deal with trouble the most of all. <laughs> So when Alfie goes trespassing and bites off more than he bargained for, I love that sort of the sense of him making a mistake that follows him all through the book. And when he's trying to claw back that mistake and mend everything. And I think I particularly enjoyed him trying to keep a lid on things. So when something's got into the fridge at home and then it's in the walls and he doesn't want to really get other people involved and 
There's also a part when his phone gets involved and there are some quite explosive parts and things get to terrific temperatures of certain fireballs and lightning strikes and things like that. So, so yeah, I think the explosive parts of the book are my favourites. I love when some, sometimes other authors will say the book is explosive, but you kind of literally mean it here. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, with every new author we have at Fun Kids, I do a little quick fire round of questions. Um, is it okay to do that with you right now? Mm, yeah, that's great. Great. It's just a bit of a quiz, just to figure out a little bit about your style. Uh, so first up, books or Kindles? Books. Books. Heroes or villains? Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> Ooh, because villains are so much fun. I think I'll have to go with heroes, though. That's okay. That does stump a lot of authors, actually, that question. <laughs> um, thunder or lightning? Ooh, lightning. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, film adaptation or TV adaptation? Oh, I've never thought of that before. Or the difference between them. Hmm... I have to choose one. I'll go for film. Uh, <laughs> writing or reading? Oh, if I had to choose between them, that would be such a hard choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to go with writing if you're really making me choose. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yes, you're taking my rules seriously. I appreciate that. Um, um, Hogwarts or Narnia? Oh, another hard one too. <laughs> like both. Okay, I'll go with Narnia today today but tomorrow it might be hogwarts it might be <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you use a laptop or do you write by hand i do a bit of both actually the majority of it is on, on the laptop but i do do a lot in notebooks by hand as well mm, okay to prepare yourself uh mm. do you prefer writing for children or for grown-ups again i'm a bit of a gonna be one of those people that always says both but <laughs> if i really had to choose if you made me i would say children well, that's the correct answer for this interview, so I appreciate that. <laughs> do you write nine to five or do you write when you fancy? Well, I write nine to five, to be honest, because that's, you know, the only way to get it done. <laughs> so, yeah, nine to five. Good answer. Uh, Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Hmm, Paddington. Paddington. And finally, the big one, the most important one of all, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Oh, cheese and onion, definitely. No, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Salt and vinegar are nice, but they're just a little bit too, too much. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, salt and vinegar is my favourite, but I'll let you off. At the crisp buffet, you can have the cheese and onion. I'll have the salt and vinegar. We'll both be happy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, Claire, thank you so much for doing that quiz for me. And thank you for telling us about the lightning catcher. Um, like you said, it's out right now. And um, now bookshops are open again. Everybody can go and check it out. Is that right? Yeah, yes, from today. You'll be able to find it in bookshops. It's so exciting. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Claire. We're home! Adam's dad just dropped us off. What did you get up to? We've been playing and listening to fun kids. On the radio? Actually, it was on a smart speaker. Yeah, we just shouted, Alexa, play fun kids. And it started playing songs we liked, not like your grown-up station. Oh, uh, well, we probably can't do that as we don't have Alexa, we have Google. Hey, Google, play fun kids. Did you know how to do that? George from the breakfast show told us how it works on smart speakers. I should have known. He's very smart. Get Fun Kids on your smart speaker all around the house. Just tell it to play Fun Kids. Grab your BFFs and get stuck into Girl Talk magazine. Full of your fave celebs and YouTubers. Each issue is packed with fun, including puzzles and cute pets, quizzes and amazing bakes. All this plus awesome prizes, fab fashion and amazing gifts. Girl Talk magazine. Get it every month. What are you waiting for? Now, I did promise you a bit of a celebrity reading in this episode of the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast, and I do not disappoint. I hold on to my promises. So, right now, you can hear an exclusive reading by Claire Balding of Claire Balding's brand new book. Yeah, OK. I will give you a little reading from Courage as a Muscle. When I was at primary school, I was being picked on by a boy. He kept on and on saying hurtful things and being unkind. I got more and more wound up and eventually I lost my temper and shouted at him. I said things back to him that were just as bad as what he'd said to me. Did I feel good about myself? No. 
Afterwards, I thought of all the ways I could have responded better. I started to jot down helpful phrases that I could use to defend myself or someone else. Like, I'm sorry that you feel you need to behave this way. Is there anything I can do to help? Why would you be so unkind? And this is one of my favourites. You probably didn't mean to be that rude. I practice saying them so that if I was in a situation where I needed to react, I wouldn't have to think too long about it. Try it now and think of some of your own. The main thing is not to be mean and to try to keep the tone light. Of course, you don't want to start a fight, but you do want to be able to support yourself or someone who needs it. Sometimes you don't even need to say anything. You can walk away or put your arm around someone else and help them walk away. To walk away can take more courage than anything. So look around you. Be aware of other people and be prepared to stand up for them if needs be. That takes real courage. But you've been practising, so you can do it. And that's in the courage as a muscle thing. And actually, do you know, I do that even now on social media. If somebody says something that really annoys me, I say, I reply. And I say, I'm sure you think you're right. <laughs> which, mm, which is kind of... It's really patronising as well, but it, it, you, you know, it says, I've seen this, I don't agree with you, but I understand your right to say it, and in saying it at the moment you've said it, you probably think you're right. So it's, it's kind of, yeah, there you go, I've acknowledged it. And, and, but don't you, haven't you had those moments so many times where you're in an argument or you're in a, or you see someone else being picked on and you think, why didn't I say that? Why didn't I do something? And learning actually how to not just be a bystander, but how to actively contribute in difficult situations and to do so in a way that's not going to stoke a fire, that's going to, going to kind of make everyone feel okay. I think that's really, it's really hard to do, but it's important to try and learn. Well, there we go. That was it for the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast this week. Thanks so much to Ben Bailey-Smith, to Claire Weze and to Claire Balding as well. If you've enjoyed the show, remember to uh, like, subscribe, follow wherever it is you get your podcasts from and tell all of your friends about it. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Hey, kids, time to get to school. Can we have Fun Kids in the car? I think it'll have to be my station this morning, kids. I'm not sure we can get Fun Kids in the car. Yes, we can. We've got Apple CarPlay. Um, yes, but I'm not sure how we do it. I know. The Fun Kids app works with CarPlay or Android Auto, like Nikki's mum's car has. So, Dad, all you need to do is plug your phone into the car and you'll see the app appear on the dashboard. True, but, um, I was going to drive mum's car today as mine has to go to be fixed. That's OK. You can connect your phone through Bluetooth in Mum's car. Where do you get all these facts? You should listen to Fun Kids more. Take Fun Kids with you. Download the app and when you're in the car, you can Bluetooth it or connect it to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto.